Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is April the 8th, 2024. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk about a battle between two unbeatens, Ajit Kabayel versus Frank Sanchez. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, if you're from the school of thought, and I am, that sometimes the press overvalues just a few insiders. That there are some people in boxing who are just outside the field of vision that could give a heavyweight champ a run for the money, right? I believe that's the situation right now at heavyweight. I have a lot of respect for Tyson Fury. I feel Tyson Fury has a problem with smaller guys who have better coordination. I have the utmost respect for Usyk. If you followed my videos, you know I was talking about Usyk's prospects at heavyweight when he was a cruiserweight. Right? Usyk has a coordination advantage over most heavyweights. But let's ask a tough question. When is the last time that Usyk fought someone who was close to him in coordination. When's the last time Usyk fought someone where Usyk didn't have a decided foot speed advantage over that heavyweight? Right? I would argue even the Tony Bellew fight, Usyk is the mover in that fight. Right? Usyk moved better than Tony. And of course, Usyk is a southpaw, which complicates things for the slower moving guy. Hasn't Usyk, in fact, been feasting off of bigger, clunkier heavyweights, think Anthony Joshua, guys who are front foot heavy and don't really have much of a back foot, think Derek Chisora, right? Guys who are big, rely on that bigness, they might be explosive, but they're tentative. Think Daniel Dubois, right? Let's ask the tough question here. When is the last time that Usyk's been in the ring with a guy who has the back foot, who might be able to back away from him, who might be able to at least match him in lateral movement, who might not just have, let's say, one big punch, a big overhand right, or let's say a second big punch, a great left hook, but who actually is a boxer who can throw a variety of punches. If it takes a left hand to the body, the guy has it. If it takes an uppercut, the guy has it. The guy can do things on the move that big, clunky heavyweights can't do. Well, folks, this is, to me, a huge fight. I'm not going to sit here and say it's as big a fight as the battle for the undisputed title between Fury and Usyk. But let's just say these guys have an opportunity, along with the guy who is fighting Lawrence Okole at Bridgerweight, right? Rosansky. These guys, a little bit different. Rosansky's a Mike Tyson guy. He can get underneath big clunky heavyweights, right? We have to ask ourselves, who can beat big clunky heavyweights? A guy who's a power puncher who can get underneath you and then come up and feel comfortable throwing big hooks deep in the pocket would give a lot of these big clunky heavyweights problems. Right? Well, just understand that so too can movers. You have a fight here between two guys with legs, two guys with coordination, Two guys who, in my opinion, have been avoided. Wasn't that McMudah fight that Ajit Kabayel threw down a recent masterpiece, right? One of the best fights any fighter has had that I know of over, let's say, the last three years, 
right? Wasn't it a revelation to see a big clunky heavyweight in there unable to find a smaller, more agile guy who threw whatever punches were needed, and they included uppercuts, in the moment, who figured out that the big clunky Goliath-looking dude in front of him could not take shots to the body. If you revisit that fight, just Google the highlights, it's even more impressive today than it was when it happened. When it happened, we were all dazed. It was a shock. Now you look at it and you realize <laughs> McBudov's in over his head against a more fluid technician. Well, that unbeaten Ajit Kabayel is fighting a guy who might even be more avoided, Frank Sanchez. Now, I'm just keeping it real here. We're early on this fight. I have not seen the odds posted. But I do believe that Frank Sanchez has the advantage. If I had one bet to make, and you know when the odds are posted, we'll hedge it up and we'll look at props and we'll look at rounds. But here early, if I had one bet to make, it would be on Frank Sanchez to win the fight. Let's talk about it. Ajit Caballel, folks, he has a great back foot. Right? This is the, we'll call it a wait and see back foot. Where he's fighting a guy, McMudoff, whoever, and he wants space. He wants time to think. He'll back away from the pocket and he'll look at you. As you come forward, he'll read what you're doing and he'll figure out what's open. Right? In a way, he's like Tom Brady. They would ask Tom Brady, the former NFL quarterback, who's your favorite receiver? And Tom would answer, the open receiver. Right, this is the guy who is making in-fight adjustments. Once he figures out that McMudoff's body is something McMudoff can't handle, he just kills him with body shots. Kills him. Right? I want you to look at that fight, revisit it, and see where McMudoff goes down off body shots. Folks, he's over by the ropes. This is the guy with the front foot who you don't even know is being front foot because he's so seamless in the flow of a fight. And of course, I started this paragraph by talking about his back foot, which by heavyweight standards is excellent. Right? He has foot speed with coordination. As I said, this is the thinking man's fighter. As he's moving, he's thinking. In other words, he's not thinking, hey, let me get over there. Let me move in that direction. No, he's thinking, hey, let me clear my head. Let me start to move in this direction. Oh, this guy is moving and he's open for a left hand to the body. That's what I'm going to give him. Right? Against McMudoff, it's interesting, too. He's on both sides of the pocket. Right? This guy is advanced. Let me point out, too, he can lead with power shots. He doesn't need to jab at you to figure out distance before throwing a straight right hand or before throwing a left uppercut. Now, this is the guy who's prepared to throw the power shot as his lead punch and he has the confidence to believe that if he misses that punch, he has the defense to deal with whatever you're countering him with. He's two-handed. Let me just say, too, that he likes to throw an overhand right up top. His timing with it could not be better. I'm not saying he throws the punch as hard as, let's say, AJ does, or let's say Deontay Wilder does. I'm not saying he has that kind of power. But what I am saying is, wow, it takes a lot to catch guys as unprepared as Kabayal catches opponents, right? And he's not trying to frame it. This isn't Deontay Wilder spending most of three minutes 
trying to get the feet right and the moment right so he can throw that right hand. No, this is the guy who's boxing you. He sees which way you're leaning. If you're leaning in such a way where he can land that straight right hand up top, that's what he's going to do. Understand, both of these guys are boxers. The knockout comes in the flow of the fight. They're not looking to knock you out. They're looking to hit you hard. They can lead with power shots. But they're winning rounds while they're beating the daylights out of you. Right? Let me also say, too, that both of these guys are extremely bold. Right? They're in there trying to figure out the angles. When they see something, they go for it. As I said, they lead with power shots. I know we don't consider these guys to be hunters. You don't look at them and say, wow, this guy who's moving around the ring, who's showing us footwork, he's really going for the KO. But that's what the guy's doing, especially Frank Sanchez. Now, you've heard me here for years, I've been saying, and it's not obvious at first, that the fastest hands in the heavyweight division belong to Andy Ruiz. Folks, they still do. Ruiz has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. If you have a different heavyweight in mind, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Understand Usyk's not as fast as Andy Ruiz in hand speed. Well, let's make another bold statement. And everyone can check me on this, right? This site is the kind of site where no one has to wait to voice their opinion, right? You'll know in the comment section of my videos whether I'm full of it, whether I'm putting pulling a feather out of a hat. The best legs in the heavyweight division belong to Frank Sanchez. Folks, in my opinion, it's not close. I know Usyk moves well. He doesn't move like this. Right? Frank Sanchez, like Caballal, can lead with power shots. There's a difference, though, between the two of them. I believe Sanchez hits harder than Caballo. I also believe Sanchez is better defensively. I also believe Sanchez is more explosive. Right? He can pivot, change direction, and immediately, it just seems he leaps four feet to be deep in the pocket hitting you with one of the division's best straight right hands, right? I believe the explosiveness gives him the edge. When the odds are announced in this fight, or at least when I become aware of the odds in this fight, let's just say that if they're close and the odds always matter, I'm going to be on the Frank Sanchez side of the play. Right, this is a guy, by the way, who used to spar with Canelo. Now, most heavyweights aren't credible as sparring partners for guys who are smaller. Right, they don't have the coordination. We're hearing that Jay Obataya showed up, was slapping around Tyson Fury. Who knows if it's true? We're hearing Obataya was just too much for Tyson Fury and was sent home after barely starting sparring with him. Right, that's what would happen to most heavyweights. That's why I'm encouraging Jay Opataya to go to the heavyweight division. Right, forget Bridgerweight, go to the heavyweight division. I'm encouraging Lawrence Okole to go to the heavyweight division. I believe Okole is taking a huge risk in his next fight. I'm encouraging Maris Breeders to go to the heavyweight division. Because I believe there is a coordination gap. Frank Sanchez is one of the few heavyweights who I hear is sparring with one of the best boxers in the game. Right? A guy who I just flatly call defensively blessed. 
a guy who's a puncher, Canelo. And that's one of those situations, and let's realize, too, it's sparring, right? You don't want to kill the guy, right? I know some heavyweights are going to say, hey, I can beat any 168-pounder, right? But it's sparring. If the guy's your staple mate, if you, if you invited the guy to your camp to help you prepare for fights, you don't want a real fight to happen in sparring. But just understand, if it's, you know, a fight where you're dealing with your reflexes and you want to make sure you have the hand speed, the positioning, you can handle combinations, just understand that Frank Sanchez is one of the few guys who are credible at heavyweight enough to actually give Canelo good sparring. Right, so I like Frank Sanchez here. Here's what'll happen, folks. I believe Usyk's a smart guy. I believe Usyk's just been feasting on the moment, right? He came along at a time when we had big clunky guys, right? Wilder, Joshua, ruling the roost at heavyweight, right? They're the guys who were ruling the roost. Then you had a guy who looks good against big clunky guys, Fury, but he himself can't hang. He doesn't have the coordination to hang with a Steve Cunningham. We'll find out if he has the coordination. And that's the big question here. To hang with Usyk. Right? I'm guessing half his game's gone out the window already because the southpaw thing works when you're fighting some big clunky orthodox fighter. It doesn't work when you're fighting a native southpaw fighter who already has a coordination gap on you. Right? I believe in Usyk's been feasting on the era, right? We're in an era where we've forgotten that smaller guys with great coordination, Tyson, Joe Fraser, once ruled the roost. That guys who could fight low and only rise up when they're throwing hellacious left hooks like Joe Fraser did were dominant heavyweight champions, right? We somehow have forgotten that and we believe in evolution. Right? Okay, now the heavyweights are 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 6 6 I saw Big Baby in a fight. Right? It's the fight where he had the high school band. Right? It's the fight where he fought the guy who Anthony Joshua beat to win his first heavyweight title. And I was looking at Big Baby, and there are stretches in that fight where a boxing match breaks out. And Big Baby looked clueless. How many hard punches did he get hit with when a boxing match broke out? You were looking at him and you thought, well, wow, here's a guy who's unbeaten, who's being heavily touted here in the United States, right? Who, Bob Arum, Ali's former guy, right, is touting as having the capability to be dominant, Right? Big Baby, of course, is having out-of-the-ring issues. Big Baby, I got to tell you, you're not good enough to have out-of-the-ring issues. If the people around you haven't told you to check yourself, I'm telling you here to check yourself. Right, folks? I see a guy like that, big clunky heavyweight. I know he's high volume, higher volume than some of the other big clunky heavyweights. You know, a dude like that needs to realize, hey, I've been fighting stiffs. Right? If I get in the ring with a Caballal or a Frank Sanchez, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to have to bring my support animal to camp because it's going to be stressful. Right? Just understand, folks, styles make fights. I believe Usyk is smart enough to realize that should he beat Tyson Fury, there is nowhere else to go. He will have been undisputed at cruiser. He will have been undisputed at heavy. I think he knows people like Philippe Ergovic are trouble, would be trouble, right? I believe the heavyweight division is set up by promoters where their guys, of course, are in the driver's seat to the exclusion of everyone else, right? Let's face it. Everyone knows Luis Ortiz would be a tough matchup, slick southpaw can fight you from distance, can fight in the pocket, right? Even those who've beaten Luis Ortiz, Andy Ruiz, for example, uh, 
Deontay Wilder. I'm sure these guys know they dodge bullets. Right? Andy starts out fast against Luis Ortiz. Then Luis Ortiz takes over the last third of the fight. Right now, all I'm saying is in this heavyweight division, guys aren't stupid. I believe if Usyk beats Fury, and if there's a rematch, which I question, I would not be surprised if he leaves the stage. Right? At some point, even the greats have to leave the stage. Understand, there's always going to be some young guy out there who's the next big new thing. And that young guy will have studied your career. He will have targeted you. You might not even know who the young guy is. Well, I need for folks to understand that these heavyweights, Caballal, Frank Sanchez, they know it's a big clunky heavyweight era. They have targeted that style. Look at the foot speed gap between Caballal and McMudoff when they fought. Right? Caballal was ready for him. He was the big underdog in the fight. He was ready for him. Now, these two guys are daredevils. I'm shocked they're fighting each other because I believe each could mow down several of these big clunky heavyweights. Just understand the heavyweight division right now isn't ready for either of these guys style-wise. Both of these guys would have the coordination advantage on Tyson Fury. Right? Let's just figure it out. Right? This is a huge fight. I'm giving the edge to Frank Sanchez because of his explosiveness because of my perception that he is the harder puncher, right? Caballal will not be able to hit Sanchez in the body like he hit McMudoff, right? I would not be shocked if Caballal wins the fight. He's that good. Just understand these are two of the best sets of legs in the heavyweight division. I think Frank Sanchez has the best legs in the heavyweight division which is not ready for either of these guys. We've been prioritizing KOs, not boxing. These are the guys who can get the KO in the course of boxing you to death. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.